at the valuation, but as it is now, because of time, we're going to be looking at something uh, different, but do also of a national uh, interest. If you look at the cost of building now, is skyrocketing due to uh, inflation also is part of it. Uh, when you have high rates of uh, building materials, high rates of getting estates, you know that it's uh, so difficult for Nigerians to get a roof over their head. So uh, for most persons who want to uh, purchase, purchase uh, real estate, sometimes they don't do the due diligence that they're supposed to do for them to uh, not to be caught uh, probably uh, by those who we refer as uh, uh, speculators sometimes in terms of uh, estate. But I know I have an expert in the house this morning who will be looking at that. Uh, while we should go through due diligence, uh, due diligence before uh, purchasing any uh, real estate, whether land or uh, housing properties. I, I have with me this morning Sadiq Abello. He's a public affairs analyst and also uh, into real estate. Very good morning to you, Sadiq. Good morning, Mr. Dominic. Thank you very much for having me this morning. All right. Um, let, let's begin with what's really is due diligence in estates uh, uh, business. Okay. Basically, um, due diligence in real estate is to thoroughly investigate what exactly you're buying. Mm -hmm. Is to thoroughly ascertain that, okay, this thing you're buying is actually what you think you're buying. Because most times a lot of people buy property thinking, okay, this is what they've bought, but in the real sense what they have bought is problem. So due diligence basically is to ensure that you, what you think you're buying is what you're buying and from who you think you're buying. So uh, let, me, let me take you back to what I was trying to say earlier. We know the cost of uh, having a property now is out of the reach of the ordinary man. Yes. I look at building materials, I look at other factors uh, attributed to it. Now, what would you attribute to the current situation we are having, whereby you see buildings spread around and yet nobody is uh, uh, occupying them? Okay, there are a lot of um, factors to that. The truth is that today there are almost no affordable properties in Abuja and Nigeria as a whole. Because what you think is an affordable property cannot be afforded by the ordinary man. So the average salary earner or the average worker in Nigeria cannot afford a 30 million naira property, which is in the class of affordable properties in FCT, does if they even exist at all. So a lot of those um, properties you see that are not being occupied are being store of value for the people that own those properties because if you consider inflation now inflation is at over 30 percent how do you expect people to actually put money in the bank so people will rather buy properties and tie down instead of actually putting that money in the bank those people that are buying those properties and not occupying them what they understand clearly is that this property can appreciate five times fold in five or seven years so they are very much aware of that. Many of them are not interested in the rent because if you compare cost of um, price of rent, how much is rent and how much they are buying those properties for, you'll realize that the rent cost is very insignificant compared to how much they are buying those properties. So they will rather tie down that property across five years, six years, seven years or ten years and get um, five times fold, ten times fold of their money than to go through the rent process. So if we're looking at people tying down property because they want to uh, make money, mm. uh, how do we begin to address the housing deficits we are having at the moment? In fact, that um, housing deficit needs a committed effort, a committed effort from the private sector and from the government. Because if you see the increase in population in FCT annually, FCT is increasing by about 5% annually. That's over 200,000 people on annual basis. And the deficit is also increasing. And for now, there is no committed effort in addressing um, the housing deficit, even from the private sector and from the government. Because at this point, we need to be innovative. 
we need to be innovative with the, with the way we build. We need to be innovating, innovative with our financing, with our partnerships, with land acquisition and everything that is related to construction. We need to start being as innovative as possible because our current building system will not help in addressing our housing deficit. The average building cost of a typical four-bedroom duplex today is about 60 million naira. That's on average. Now, how do you expect people to be able, aside the land cost and what have you, in view, input the cost of the land and other factors, charges to regulatory bodies and what have you, you will understand that, okay, this pattern is not sustainable. We need to look into alternative building technologies. Many of them have been adopted in um, in developed countries so until we start using those building technologies that will significantly bring down the cost of building without actually interfering with quality we will not begin to properly address our housing deficit once we are innovative with our um, building technologies then we need to be innovative with our financing the way properties are being bought in Nigeria are not being bought anywhere else in the world. I remember recently there was um, a news about um, P. Daddy, an American um, musician. So we were discussing and a friend was telling me, you can imagine these celebrities, they are borrowing money to purchase luxury houses. So I told him that there is actually nothing wrong is that it's because our, of our mentality of how people are buying properties outrightly in Nigeria that you think there's something wrong with that. In developed countries, many people just need 10% down payment to acquire the properties they want to acquire. Some as even low as 5%, some as low as 15%, 20% of the actual purchase amount. We need to have functional systems in Nigeria that will allow people to be able to purchase properties with mortgages and other financing options that they are only committing a very insignificant amount outrightly and let there be financing to complete the okay. payment. The, another aspect of uh, trying to get affordable housing, just like you talked about uh, embracing technology that are more friendly mm -hmm. in terms of uh, they are providing housing that are affordable. Uh, we have this issue when Nigerians uh, tend to neglect uh, locally made materials when uh, going into building. Uh, I don't know how worrisome that is because it's part of the reason why we see houses on the rise also. If you have available materials here, you don't need to source for them outside and then when you build a house, you want to increase the price. That's very correct. In fact, um, if you notice UK and US, most of their houses are wooden houses. Yes. Kenya currently are fully adopting the CSCB technology, the compressed earth stabilized brick technology. It's a building technology that like it's majorly sand and um, very little water. And they are interlocked. So with that, you are reducing about 40% of your building costs. And those materials are readily available in Nigeria. And if you get experts that can use that construction model very well, it comes out very, very nice. So I think it has to do a lot with orientation. A lot of developers know these things, but they are thinking, OK, I should not invest the money in this project, and the acceptability is low. So. I think a, a dedicated effort needs to be made on reorienting people that, okay, there are locally um, materials that can be sourced and buildings can be as affordable as possible. Because if you, most developed countries use wood a lot in their buildings. If you build a wooden house today, nobody is going to buy it in Nigeria. If you build using styrofoam today, which is um, which is a material that is being adopted globally. Styrofoam, this um, whitish material that comes in um, a lot of new materials. Mm. Yes, it's being used for buildings today across the world. It's a very durable material that is water resistant 
and when properly coated, even fireproof. But if you use those things to build today in Nigeria, nobody is going to actually look at your structure. Uh, let, me, let me take you back to the issue of um, two diligence. I know okay. we have problems where uh, individuals tend to purchase lands from uh, community chiefs, and then you see construction going on. And then later on, you see maybe that the FCT administration or probably uh, some persons will come and reclaim that uh, areas. And then we start having issues of, I bought this land from the community. Now, in terms of, uh, not just the FCT alone, it's happening virtually in all uh, states where if you don't go through the normal process of you acquiring uh, properties or lands, we always find ourselves in that situation whereby you start going back to the beginning, start looking for how to get affordable accommodation for yourself. Okay. Um, now, this um, community chief matters, especially in FCT, there is something we really need to be clear about. A lot of various people bought la buy lands from community chiefs. Those community chiefs don't have right to actually sell those lands to anybody because in the first place, in the first place, those lands have not been designated as community lands. A lot of those lands are actually people's land. They are lands that government have actually allocated to people. So if you are buying those kind of lands, most times you are actually buying those lands, those lands wrongly. If you want to buy any land from any community chief, you need to check out with development control. Get the coordinates of that land, check with development control, check with URP urban and regional planning to ascertain that is this area under the jurisdiction of the development control and what has URP designed this area to be. Because once it's under the jurisdiction of the development control, once they have it as the areas they should be checkmating, that's to tell you that, okay, this area has not been left out for the community. But once it's not within their jurisdiction, then that will tell you okay probably you need to further your findings check with ages to see okay at ages have these places been allocated if they've been allocated that's to tell you it's a no-go area in fact there are a lot of instances where there's a very beautiful area today i don't want to mention specific names that a lot of people have built in claiming its community lands but, but as i speak now Surveys have been concluded in that place and most of the houses in that area are going down. So coming back to the due diligence question, if you're purchasing lands, especially in FCT and other states, there are certain processes you should go through to carry out a proper due diligence to be sure you're getting what you think you're getting. The first step is your inquiry stage. You are making findings, okay, where is the land, who owns the land, what company owns the land, okay, who did this company bought from, and so on. You are trying to gather information from the seller and other people you are dealing with. That's your first stage. The second stage is your verification stage. You are trying to ascertain that these informations you have gathered, are they valid? You are trying to verify that, okay, this person you are dealing with, who is he? Is he the owner of the land? If he is the owner of the land, how did he got it? You are trying to verify that, okay, if it's a company that owns this land, is this a registered company? Are you dealing with one of the directors of that particular company? Okay, if you are dealing with one of the directors of this company, you are trying to also verify that there are no liens or encumbrances on that property. You want to ascertain that, okay, this person has not dropped the title of this property you are buying at the bank and collected 200 million naira loan from the bank so that you will not start constructing on that site tomorrow bank will come to retrieve that property for you that it's their own this person has not serviced their loan you're also trying to ascertain that okay this particular land in question hope there is no other party that is dragging this land with this particular person Okay, all these are things you are actually verifying at your verification stage. 
once you have done that you also need to ascertain that the purpose of that line is in line with what you intend to do these findings now you are doing this at urp urban and regional planning you are trying to ascertain that okay um, what i want to build on this land is an estate this person said this is an estate land is this place designed to be an estate most times you will be shocked to find out that that place is designed to contain a church or it's designed to contain a mox or it's even designated as a district park or a green area so you're trying to verify that now if what you're buying is a built house you're further trying to verify that the building plan approval of this particular developer or this particular person you're buying this property from is in line with what he's presenting to you will need to see the building plan approval of a developer if you're buying a house from him the reason being that a lot of dubious developers might have approval for 100 um, properties but what they will be building will be 130 properties while you're trying to confirm that building plan approval is to ascertain that the property A or the property B you're buying is part of the properties that have been approved for that developer to build. Because you have a lot of instances where people build their houses on lands that have not been approved. Just for them to find out that, okay, this place is actually supposed to be a sewage system. It's supposed to be a water plant. It's supposed to be a power highway. There's a popular instance in Apo now, and I don't want to mention specific names of um, developers that built on FCT infrastructure, way, road infrastructure, light infrastructure, and sewage system. There are a lot of houses in that estate today, but they have all been marked for demolition. That well, is okay. why... Why I ask this question, though, you've given so much insight into it, and most um, Nigerians to appreciate the fact that uh, we have to bring this to the notice with the ongoing demolition exercise in the FCT. We yes. saw it massively as of last year before the yes. uh, present administration took over and the current minister also is going about trying to change uh, the face of the FCT and yes. so many ways to be going. Yes. Uh, if you look at the coastal uh, highway also, so many buildings are going up. Going down. I already pointed fingers at the government. That's correct. Venture, yes. Uh, most of them did not go through the Roma process for them to acquire their property just like you established. As you wrap, wrap up this assignment, what's your final uh, words for particularly the government? Because we still have to get these houses available and affordable for the low income owners. Okay. Um, finally, for the government, innovation in financing is key. We need to be innovative. Since, since this is um, on air, if you notice, the current minister is actually doing a lot in terms of um, infrastructure. In his last public broadcast, there is um, where he mentioned that in next year budget he will be looking at housing. So I am actually suggesting that if FCT wants to provide affordable housing, they actually don't need to wait for next year budget with innovative financing fct can build thousands of houses without actually financing from fct let me picture this out so that we are on the same yeah, because of time, page I'm sorry we just have to uh, maybe in one minute okay okay okay. okay 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 so in one minute the fct minister can get a land he wants to build thousands of houses on carry out the design, issue a bank guarantee to any developer to go and deliver those houses. FCT is actually not putting money. If you're intending to build 1,000 houses, issue a bank guarantee for the first 100 houses. As the um, developer is building, a committee can be selling those houses and be paying the developer. With that system, the FCT can actually deliver thousands of houses without actually needing to use financing from the FCT. Right, so I must thank you so much. Our time is not on our side for us to actually look at these uh, issues. Whereas the deep Ahmed Bello 
the public affairs analyst and also an estate uh, expert. Thank you so much for being on the program. Thank you very much for having me, Mr. Right. Dominic. We'll take a quick break. I'm already turned. And uh, Dear Gilly will be joining us on the TMI Social for this morning. <laughs>